Let's prepare our hearts to worship God. Will you stand if you're able and join in our call to worship?
please listen now for a word from God as we read from the Holy Scriptures. Our reading is from the Gospel according to John, chapter 21, verses 1 to 17. John has described Jesus rising from the dead, appearing to Mary Magdalene, appearing to the visitors in the road, and appearing in the closed room we discussed last week. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it. And now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. And when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and he jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, 153 of them. And though none were, there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew that it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. And this was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And he said to them, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, you love me. Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, you love me. And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. A word from God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. You stand if you're comfortable doing so and join in singing, Jesus calls us. Number three, nine, eight.
up, I want to show you a couple of pictures. Please can come up and go ahead and sit down. I'll be there in a second. Fortunately, when I put them into the slide projector, they showed up sideways. And I can't figure out how to make them stand up. So if you turn your head sideways to the left, you can see this is the shore of the, the Sea of Galilee. It's a pebble beach, not a sandy beach. And it's foggy because it's morning, so you can't see very far out into the lake. jetty that was left there from the first century. And you can see the water, but you can't see very far out onto the lake. So you can tell that it is common to have fog that gets in the way of seeing what's out there. And if you're out in the lake, from seeing what's on the shore. saying they can't get to see you. So you guys will come up here and sit. Can you come up and sit? Sit, sit farther up. Come farther up. Everybody come up and spread out. Oh my goodness. Michael. 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 We're going to have sugar wafers, but we're also going to have another treat. When people, when people came, when Jesus came to see his disciples on the shore, he had breakfast ready for them. What do you like to eat for breakfast? Chicken nuggets. What do you like to eat for breakfast? for breakfast? you like lots of different things for breakfast. I usually eat cereal, or sometimes we eat eggs. When I was, when I was a little kid, my dad, he came to us once and said, it's going to be Mother's Day. And so we should fix something for breakfast, because mommy's always fixing stuff for us. And I remember that we always would wake up and you could smell something. You would. Okay, those are the best. My mommy would be cooking something and we could smell it cooking and know, oh, it was going to be a good breakfast. It was going to be something special. So we decided we would pick something special for my mom for Mother's Day. Of course, I didn't know how to cook very much. And so, yeah, I'd say, I'll cook a lot of stuff, but you can come with me and we'll get donuts. So we got donuts for my mom. They didn't actually have munchkins in those days, but they have now. If you would like a donut too, you can have a donut. Yeah, donuts. Would you like a donut? Mm -hmm. yes. No? Would you like a donut, guys? 
It's a very sugary morning, I know. The thing that was neat was when we went and took these, when we took these into my mom, she was still asleep in bed, and we woke her up and we said, we made breakfast for you. And she was so happy that we made breakfast for her. It wasn't important what we brought. It was the fact that we made it for her. And that's what the disciples thought when Jesus had made breakfast for them. It wasn't specifically what they ate. It was the fact that he was there and he made breakfast for them. So we can know that whatever we're going through, they had had a really hard night. They had been fishing and fishing and hadn't caught anything. They had been working and working and hadn't caught anything. And when Jesus was there, he told them that they could cast their net on the other side. That's a net that you're playing with over there. And then he made breakfast for them. So we know that even though we're having really hard times, Jesus is going ahead of us and making things for us. He can break for us. Okay, so let's pray. God, we thank you that you always go ahead of us and you always prepare the way for us. You always have breakfast waiting for us. Amen. Okay. Well, it's Children's Church today. Okay, so you need to go back to school. You can follow this is the queue and have a fun time. Okay? Whichever one you want is okay. Okay, there we go. Everybody can, is, can go to Children's Church if they want to, but they don't have to. That's one of the neat things here, is that everybody is always welcome here. I'm going to move this picture because I think you're going to be getting dizzy. church. And he was one of the first people I met when I got to the Sussex United Methodist Church. It was the middle of the summer. The middle of the summer. July 1st was the first day of my official tenure here. And we were doing outdoor church, as we always do every summer. We were in the outdoor chapel. And people would come and sit on the benches or bring lawn chairs. And Sai always brought a lawn chair and sat in the middle of the hill. And I was trying to be the good new pastor. I walked around and was introducing myself to everyone. And I walked up to Sai and introduced myself. And he said, I want you to know I don't like lady ministers. I said, well, you're in luck because I'm the new minister and I'm, I'm in. He says, and I don't like outdoor church. I think we should be in the sanctuary. I don't like worshiping outside with all the noises and the heat. But he was there. And I really admired that. So we'll come back to that. We'll come back to that. I was thinking about that as I thought about this lesson. Jesus was appearing to his disciples again and again, and you'd think it would be the most exciting, wonderful time in life, that they would have been happy, that they would have been giddy with possibilities, that they would be running around telling everybody the story of what they had experienced, and no doubt they did. But some time passed, and they must have gotten discouraged. The text doesn't specifically say that they were discouraged, but look at what's going on in this story. It says, after all these things happened, they were together, some of them, not all of them, up in Galilee, around their old hometowns. And Peter said, I'm going to go fishing. Now this is not a hobby fisherman. 
This is not somebody looking for a nice day off to go catch some fish for dinner. Not somebody who had his tackle in the box who was going to go and catch one fish. Peter was a professional fisherman. So saying he was going fishing again meant that he was going back to work. He was going to his day job. He was going to go back to work. And the others who were with him said, we'll go with you. This is the, the, the wording of somebody, of several people, who were really discouraged. It's understandable, and that back when they were in the upper room and Thomas came to join them, Thomas had been away when Jesus appeared to them first, and they couldn't even convince one of their closest friends that what they had seen with their own eyes was true, that Jesus was alive again. If they couldn't convince Thomas, how are they going to convince people who weren't there and didn't know Jesus? How are they going to convince people in odd places they had never been to before? How could they convince anybody with half a brain that this crazy story was true? It must have been a daunting project. There were only a handful of them. There were only a few of them who had seen Jesus, and they were supposed to tell everybody. It must have been discouraging. And so they were going to go back to what they knew. Back to work. They were fishermen and they knew how to fish. And they went back to work. And even that didn't go right. Have you ever tried that? Have a hard time? Things not going right? Not what you wanted to do? Not the way you wanted to be spending your time? So I'm going to go back to what I know. And then even that doesn't work. They fished and they fished and they fished all night. It's hard work. It's out in the water. There are no places to go for food. There's no entertainment. There's just the slapping of the water against the boat. They lowered their nets again and again and got nothing. Nothing at all. And then, as if to add insult to injury, they came near the shoreline and a stranger on the beach that they can see just barely through the fog says, what strangers always say when they walk up to you on an unsuccessful fishing trip. Anybody ever been fishing and catch nothing? There's always somebody who comes along with more gear than you have and says, what are you catching today? <laughs> Sunburn, <laughs> somebody said. You got any fish? No. Isn't that obvious from the height of the boat in the water? Isn't it obvious from the dejected looks of everybody? Isn't it obvious from the empty net dragging along? Well, try on the other side of the boat. Put the net on the other side of the boat. What a ridiculous idea. If there's no fish on this side of the boat, are there going to be fish on that side of the boat? That's what, a foot and a half distance? But wait, they hadn't heard that line before. Jesus is reminding them of another event. When he first met them, they had caught nothing, and he said, try again. Go out for a catch. Throw your net on the other side. And when they did, they caught a huge number of fish. And so one of the disciples said, yes, let's try it again. They tried it again. Huge number of fish. So many they couldn't haul it into the boat. And they said, it's the Lord. It's Jesus. And Peter jumped up and put his clothes back on and leaped into the water and swam to the shore. And it was Jesus reminding them of that time when he told them what their purpose was. Do you remember what it was? He said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men, fishers of people. I will make you go and bring people to me to give them new life. That's what you're about. Not catching fish, not making money, not entertaining yourself, bringing people to me, not even being successful in changing their hearts. That's Jesus' job. Bring them to me. He reminded them that amazing things were possible when he was there. That even when they were total failures, Jesus could make things happen. And they came to the shore, and Jesus had 
breakfast already there. A fire already going, fish already cooking, bread already laid out. He asked them to bring some of the fish to him and they made more breakfast. And he said, let's have breakfast. That reminded them of other things too. That's the second lesson. What do you think it reminded them of? Last supper maybe? The time when they were together and he raised up the bread and said, this is my body. How about the time on the hillside where they had a huge crowd and there was no food and he brought a few fish and a couple of loaves of bread and fed thousands of people. What about just all the times on the road where they had been together and they had shared food and shared stories and shared word of what was going to happen in Jesus' life and in their own. Jesus told them in the Last Supper, I'm going to go and prepare a place for you. Remember that line? I'm going to go ahead of you and prepare a place for you. And here he is acting that out. Ahead of them, preparing a place for them. Preparing breakfast for them. They could smell it cooking. They knew that what he said was true. Amazing things are possible when Jesus is there. Jesus goes ahead of us to prepare for us. Jesus can make the food of our souls available when there seems to be nothing. So they were there eating, and they were with him, and they were excited. And then there's a third lesson. Jesus reminded them of their purpose, to fish for people, right? He reminded them that he could take care of them, that he would provide what they needed. He reminded them he was going to be there ahead of them. And then he turns to Peter and says, Peter, you like me? The word he used is the word for friendship. Filios. Do you like me? Peter says, you know I love you, Lord. You know I do says, Jesus responded, feed my lambs. Lambs? Did you have sheep with you? Lord, I don't see any sheep. Time goes by and Peter said, Jesus said, Peter, you like me? Lord, you know I do. I answered before, I love you. Tend my sheep. Tending sheep is more of a big deal than taking, feeding lambs. There's lots of them, they're big, they're smelly, they wander all around, they're nearsighted. None of these people knows the least thing about taking care of sheep. They are professional fishers. They fish for a living. They live by the lake. The sheep are tended in the southern part of the kingdom. That's where the rocky hillsides are. These guys don't know how to take care of sheep. Jesus turned one more time to Peter and said, Peter, son of John, you know it's serious when he uses his full name. I always knew when I was a kid when my mom really was talking something serious to me. Daniel William Gepford. Uh oh. <laughs> this is something serious. Simon, son of John, do you love me? This time he used a different word. You know it. It's agape. We always think of it as a churchy word. For the love of God, something special. But it has to be more than just something used in church or it wouldn't be in the language. It's the kind of love that suggests family ties. Ties between spouses. A love that won't quit. A love that is self-giving, self-sacrificing. A love that does not depend on the response. A love that just goes on and on. Close love, family love, more than friendship. Peter, do you love me? Lord, you know I love you. I've said that three times. I love you, I love you, I love you. You know everything. Instead of saying, yes, I heard you before, Jesus said, and my land. Take care of the sheep. Now if you listen to this literally, 
That doesn't make any sense. Jesus doesn't have any sheep. You can't read everything in the Bible literally. You can't read this to make any sense about it as a sheep tending issue. What is he talking about? People. He's talking about taking care of the people Jesus cares about. Of not only just people, but something unfamiliar. Jesus raises the issue first with the boat. Cast your net on the other side. Try something you never tried before because the net is made to go on one side of the boat, not both. Try something totally new. But with the sheep, it's even more. Try to take care of people you know nothing about. Try to take care of people that are totally unfamiliar. Do something totally outside your comfort zone. Fishermen find tending sheep totally outside their comfort zone. And that's what we are called to do. That's why it makes so much difference what Cy Matthew said to me all those years ago. Because Cy didn't like being in a church that had women pastors. Cy didn't like being in a church that was worshiping outside instead of in the sanctuary. But he was there anyway, week after week after week, as long as he was physically able. Because he knew that the job is not to please himself, not to inspire himself, not to engage in the stuff that he enjoys and loves, but to be a fisher of people, to inspire other people by his presence, to care for other people in any way that he could. He knew that the job was to try things outside the comfort zone. And that's so important because that's who we are as a people. People willing to try things outside our comfort zone. That's why we gather together and go on mission trips to places we haven't ever been before, to do stuff that we have never done before. That's why we put together a breakfast. We go ahead to prepare the place, just like Jesus did for us, to prepare food for a good time together for people in our community that we don't know, and we don't know whether we will like. We don't know whether they will be like us, whether they will be appreciative, or whether they will ever come back. We don't know. That's why we reach out and help people who are sick, help people who are lonely, help people who have nothing. That's why we reach out and bring people to these dinners by buying extra tickets and giving them away. That's why we try new things to bring people in. That's why we care about all these kids that we have and spend so much time centering our worship on them. That's why we're trying this new thing with all these slides. That's why we've tried music that we don't know. Some people have told me they have loved the new music that we have tried. It just has meant so much to them. It's brought tears to their eyes. It has given them a new idea. Other people can't stand it. Don't like it. Don't enjoy it. Don't feel it inspires them at all. <clears throat> I remember, though, a time when I was in a church, not even a Methodist church, where the pastor said, I've been to this inspiring conference where they did something, where they got together, and they passed the peace. <clears throat> and everybody get up and greet each other and say hello and say, God be with you and peace of Christ and God bless you. And I think we should try it here. And People liked it. I liked it. I thought it was great. It reminded me of the folk mass I had attended in a college. But other people were upset. I don't want to have to talk to people. I don't want to have to shake hands with people I don't know. And they quit. They quit the church. I was stunned. I didn't want it. I didn't want to be passing the peace enough to have people quit. But I couldn't imagine people deciding that that was more important to them than being together as a church. <coughs> and I give thanks all the time, all the time, that that is not us. That is not who we are as a community of faith. Because we each care about each other. We will each give a little to each other to inspire them, to help them, to do the things that they want to do. To reach out to people who haven't ever even been here to try to bring them to Christ, because that's what our mission is. We bring people to Christ. We help disciples grow. 
to share Christ's love. We share that by being of ourselves. That doesn't mean we're never going to do stuff we like. That's why I want to remind you of things we've done before. We passed out cards with pens. I want you to write songs and hymns you'd like to sing. And we'll sing them all summer. We've done that before, haven't we? Remember that. We've passed the peace before. We've done mission stuff before. We have tried new things before. We will do them again. Because our mission is to fish for people. Our mission is to bring people to Christ. To feed them with fish for breakfast. Well, maybe not with fish, but feed them. To offer hope to a whole generation of people who do not know the love of Christ yet. That's a joyful thing. And when we fail, we will fail a lot. I failed on slides this morning a couple of times. And when we fail, we can still know that there on the beach ahead of us is Jesus Christ already there, preparing the way, preparing the place for us, having breakfast at the ready so that we will have the strength we need to go on. Because we are called the ten sheep, and I don't know anything about sheep. But that doesn't mean it won't be fun. We have a lot of fun times together because Jesus Christ is with us and will not let us go. Thanks be to God. together and lifting up our prayers. We have a number of prayer requests here. We want to pray for the March of Dimes walkers who are walking this morning for premature babies and care for them. We all will have a safe walk uh, around the fairgrounds and that uh, they will uh, have a successful fundraiser today. We want to offer prayers of celebration for Shanna Corson, who is celebrating the birth of a baby girl. We want to offer our prayers for Linda McGruff, who is waiting surgery for a lung issue. Let's join together in prayer. Dear God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for every day, and we offer our prayers in it. We give you thanks for calling us to you challenging us to giving us hope to being there ahead of us preparing the way for us we offer our prayers for linda and for shanna and for all the march of dimes walkers and we offer these other prayers that have been on our hearts that we say either out loud or silently we're shocked right and we're shocked right Lord, we know that you hear us when we pray, either out loud or silently. And we know that you care about us, and that is why we come before you with the confidence of children, praying the words you taught us to say when we pray in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Every week we send out our community crosses. We have a note this week from Linda and Bruce.
church family, Saturday night group, thank you for the community cross. It's been difficult finding our, our son as a recurrent of fire or cancer, but it is comforting to know that you are praying for us. We also realize that all of us have difficult times, and it is good to have a great church family to help us along the way. Love and God bless, Linda and Bruce Christensen. Community crosses are all out in service this week, uh, but we continue our prayers. Uh, we sent the cross last night to, uh, to Kim and Chuck. Kim has been having uh, I see that they have migraine headaches, and Chuck has uh, further tests on his immune system coming up. So let's keep them in our prayers. That's great. Dan? Yes. Um, found out that Kimmy has a neurologist appointment on the 17th of May, unless somebody cancels, and then it would be um, a little earlier. Okay. But the, the neurologist is, does believe that they're going to do a MRI and blood work. Okay. Thank you. So please keep them in the prayer. Let's bring our gifts and our offerings.
go from this time and place then to do our job, to bring people to Christ, to help disciples grow, to share the love of Christ. We do that without fear wherever we go because we know that wherever we go and whatever we do and whatever happens to us, the love of God the Father, the grace and peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit will go with us and abide with us now and always. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.